um, registering this week. We, the Portland Textile Month had a um, quilt on display in a storefront at the, our local historical society in Oregon. And um, mm -hmm. it was stolen out of the window. Ooh. They broke in oh, and they, they took, and so it sort of stopped activities and we didn't get our registration up till Tuesday. So I apologize for anyone who was having to spend extra time and efforts to uh, get registered for today's session. But it should be good by Sunday next week for um, next week's session. But I just wanted to give you, a... I should tell you also the quilt was recovered. It was damaged, but they are able to repair it. So um, that, that was good news in the end. Mm. But anyway, um, I'm Nancy Erkenbrack and I'm a member of the Pacific Northwest Felt Makers Group. And be, on behalf of that group, I'd like to welcome you today to session three of our four sessions on felt making um, for Portland Textile Month. Session three today, the topic is visible mending. And um, this is gonna feature Flora Carlisle Kovash of Flora Felt. And she's gonna lead us in a presentation followed by an opportunity for discussion and um, questions. So if you can hold your questions till after her presentation, that would be appreciated. You can either put them in the chat or raise your hand and um, we'll make sure that we try to get everybody's questions answered. So with that, Flora, it's all yours. <laughs> Hi everybody, thank you for being here. Um, this, um, this topic was inspired actually by, by Natalie, who uh, I met in Hungary, and she was wearing one of her, one of, one of her pieces of visible mending, but that was, uh, that was only, and not only, but that was, that was mainly by stitching. And I really like that, that aspect that um, these garments have a longer life than, and um, I'm pretty much against the throwaway culture we live in. So I think, I think fighting is a perfect um, technique to do visible mending, but um, um, for this, um, um lecture i only started a i say it's a first step and there's a long way we can take this idea but for for um for this uh, class i made some samples um just just the basic and then and then um i would i would like to inspire you and take it further so my um my approach was first of all what what kind of garments could be mended by felting and um, um, I think I think it works best if we if we pick a fabric that uh, doesn't shrink. So it might it might work if you pick 100% wool or or not treated wool. But I I I did my experiments on superwash wool because I I wanted to give space for the wool to shrink, but I didn't want to shrink the rest of the car, of the piece, and uh, I put together a slideshow that I will share. Uh, my experiments were made on stockings, and I already got the criticism that these are not much visible items, right? Because we wear them <laughs> in, the, in the shoes. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I think I think I think these samples are really good because they show us many um, aspects of, of visible mending and and then you can apply the technique on many other places or other garments um, so let's see the slideshow i would like feedback do you see my screen <laughs> that's always a question okay so here's the first slide this is a stocking that I really like. It's a it's a merino stocking, and uh, it's made superwash uh, wool, so it doesn't shrink. But these certain spots wear off very easily: the ball of the feet and the heel. And um, so I decided to fix it. Let's see the next one. Um, so the heel was actually worn off so much that there was actually a, a hole bigger than a, a 
quarter and um, uh, to, to make sure that the wool is gonna stick everywhere first I did darn darn it right <laughs> so with little stitches I made those weaving of a, of a structure and I used synthetic thre uh, thread as uh, you see um, I never never um, start with a knot on the on the thread I always do two little loops and then actually when you pull it in it it um, it tightens the thread so much that it's gonna it's gonna stay um, strong and first I made the uh, horizontal lines of the thread and then I started weaving in so one was going up and then under and then up and under and unlike unlike when when we do darn darning the stockings like I learned when I was a teenager we don't want to pull the the fabric closer I wanted to stretch it as much as possible because as I mentioned we want to give space for the wood to shrink so I I used this glass ball or um, small glass and I could stretch it out as much as possible and even with even when I use the stitches I wanted to be as as wide as open as, as I could leave it and uh, once I was finished with the darning I also did just two little loops of the of the thread and I don't have the I don't I don't do knots and it it might not show but I actually had the little ends of the thread over there I didn't hide them away because they they are gonna be covered by the wool and <clears throat> here you can see this is the length of the staple of the 19 micron merino wool it's about three to four inches <clears throat> which would be way too long to use for for this smaller project so i break down the the staple i actually break the fibers just tearing them apart so they are no longer than about an inch and it's only it's only doable when you have very little wool in your hand so it's a very skinny strand of the wool in my hand and I, I constantly break, break the fibers very short. So I started laying down the, the wool on the stocking. This is the, the inside of the stocking. And I wanted to make sure that the wool covers the, the hole and it goes a little bit over. And I did two perpendicular layers and I don't know if it if we could see it on the previous slide that the feathery ends were going um, towards the edge of the patch. So I, I switched the direction of the fiber so I have the feathers um, because that, that fat uh, blends in easier. And then I sprinkled it with soapy water. I patted it down a little bit, but I didn't work very much on it because I wanted I wanted to have these fibers to stick both to the stocking and to more wool that I will place it on the other side. So after I pat it down, I put this glass and um, stretch it on and pull it inside out, which is a little tricky, but you can do it very carefully. So now we have the wool and the glass and then and then the, the stocking with the with the stitches. And then I started adding more wool. I did I did it again uh, with the very short staples and I did the two perpendicular layers. Um, and when I made it, um, when it when it completely covered the the heel of heel area, I made it wet and covered it with the plastic drop cloth, which is important because uh, when you start working with merino wool, you can experience it it sticks to the hands very easily, so it's much safer to use a plastic and pat it over the plastic. And I started rubbing it against my palm 
first I, I rubbed it in the direction of the very last layer and then I, I started making all kinds of movements. I moved it in a circle and I gave it as much agitation as possible. And then when once the skin was formed on the on the felt, I could I could remove the plastic and I could start working with my hands. I think my experience, I feel like it's always more um it's always more efficient to work directly with the hands on the wood. I don't like having the plastic. I think it, it is faster. And I also love to touch the wood. But but the first step it's always safer with the plastic. And then once I removed the plastic, I could see where I needed maybe a little more. So I went in a went back to the wool and added a little bit around the edges. And then uh, started rubbing it uh directly on the wool and soon i could remove uh, the glass and then i turned it inside out again so now it's the first side of the stocking it was you can see it's really wrinkly and uh, at that point it's really fragile it hasn't hasn't shrunk at all yet so i put back the glass and stretched it on and well, let go back when you you might see here that <clears throat> once i stretched it on the glass i could see that there were more areas that needed more coverage so um i went back to the wool again and this is the inside of the sock so i made this patch even larger so i did more loose wool very little shingles and then i went back with the water and the plastic rubbed it in as much as i could with all kinds of movements i worked my fingers back and forth i was rubbing it against my palm and <clears throat> it's nice because it's a fairly small project so you can use your entire hand to give the most agitation and cover the whole piece and after a couple of minutes, it become a very nice and smooth surface. It has, it, it's covered the whole um, heel and it has a very nice skin. <clears throat> and once, once you can, when, once I felt that the, the skin was strong enough, then, then I felt safe to remove the, the glass. And I, I laid it on a table flat. And I, and I, <clears throat> again, I can see the very wrinkled surface. And and my next step was to rub it flat. So I put plenty of soap on my hands, and I I I just only confirm that whenever I use industrial dyed wood, it always needs at least three times soap, three times as much soap as when I have hand dyed wood. <clears throat> so I use plenty of soap and carefully rub this area further once once it's getting stronger i folded it and i rolled it between my two palms and i wanted to give it as much agitation as possible these are these are basically the classic movements of washing stockings that we did when we were hiking <laughs> and as it's getting stronger I could do hot water right from the cattle. I gave it directly on the patch. And since the stocking is a uh, super wash wool, it was, it was very safe to do so. And I used, I have this vinyl runner mat on my tables, which has those uh, ridges. And I could push it against those ridges and rub it with, the, with those uh, ridges. I switched the direction so it was it was rubbed from all directions. I also use these little tools around me. This one is from Hungary that we, we got in a fighting tour. It has concentric circles. This one is from Hartfeld Silks that has a grid pattern. They both work well, but uh, since it's a very small project, it was very hard to keep them in place. So I preferred to rub against the larger surface than using those little tools. 
but they work well just it's a little hard to to keep the stocking down and in place and then i folded it in half so i could i could add um more more rubbing and it looks like we are oh yeah and then um since since the stocking had a hole both on the heel and the ball of the feet, I fixed both and then um when both both patches were fixed, then I folded them in half and I could give agitation to both patches at the same time, so that was a little bit um that that way I could uh, speed it up a little bit the process so these are these are the slides. I had for today, and I can show you the results here. <laughs> These are the nice little stockings. <laughs> I I have to say that the I'm pretty pretty happy with the results because they felt it in completely, and with this idea that I I lay down the wool first on the inside and then outside and the inside. I could build up build up enough material so it's it's as thick as the stocking it didn't get over it didn't get too thick and it didn't get too stiff and since I used the, the little glass it also has the curve so it fits very well <clears throat> and here too you can see the fibers on the edge very nicely blended in the stocking and then when I made these, <clears throat> when I finished the first pair, um, I, was, I, I was curious and I wanted to experiment a little bit. So I have two more experiments. First, I wanted to fix the stocking of my daughter. This was actually fixed several times <clears throat> already and there were new holes coming. But I wanted to, I wanted to see if prefat works for this project. So I cut cut just a rectangular piece of uh, prefab, and I put it on both sides, both on the inside and the outside, and I I fatted it with the with a similar idea that I did earlier. And the reason I wanted to try prefab is because because um, prefabs are usually um, very fine. Uh, merino wool, but also very short fiber, and I think that 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 uh, helps the process better. So <clears throat> even though I had a little little brush, little metal brush, and I made the edges fluffy, I wanted to have the edges to stick more to the base. I found it harder to attach the prefat to the wool, so one corner is actually a little bit off, a little bit loose. It works, but it doesn't. It didn't work as nicely as just a loose merino wool. So next, I thought that um, I can do prefat, and I I can fix it with some uh, loose wool. So this one has a patch of prefat, and I covered it with loose wool, loose wool to have the loose edges. But the result here become way too stiff. So this is definitely not something I would like to do again. And um, uh, it was harder to control the thickness. So um, that's not that's not a, that's not my way that I will I will do this. And finally, uh, for some entertainment of my stuff in the studio. <laughs> I decided to go after the, the old story of the monks who invented the fat making. Uh, you might heard the story that, um, well, there are several origin stories of fighting, either either the either on Noah Noah's Ark, where the the animals spent forty days and they were shredding and they peed on their fur and then step on their fur. And when they left the art, they left a wonderful fat in mat. <laughs> and um, there is also a story where a monk put some wool in in his um, shoes 
because it was uncomfortable and after a couple of days it became fat in the shoes. So I thought we can, we can experiment with, uh, with this idea in the shoes. Since I was using stocking, why, why not? So I put, I put little patches of wool on the stocking and I uh, sandwiched it in between two drop, drop glasses, two plastics. And in this case, I didn't, I didn't do any agitation of the wool. I just put, put the loose wool where the stocking was the thinnest. And I added a very little soapy water. And, and then I put my shoes on and I spent an entire day <laughs> walking, walking on these patches. So there was one here and here, and of course the, the other piece. And uh, the results that I see here, there are a few um, um, comments to share. <laughs> then um, some areas, especially the heels, a little moved around a little bit, so they didn't stay in place as much as was hoping, and the edge didn't stay as nice and loose all the way around. So it was it was harder to control the 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 um, place of the patch but where but on the bottom of the feet where it had the most pressure it actually attached pretty well i'm not i'm not uh, satisfied with the strength of this felt actually i did a little walk in the park so it was it was over two miles but i would definitely wet it again and put put it on again and then walk a little more to make it stronger but I think I think that it's a good idea to to add a little loose wool where your stockings start to shred off, you know, when it when it, when it starts to become looser. So before before you end up having a hole, you can you can strengthen it with a very easy simple way. Um, so these these were my experiments with visible mending, and. Um, um, these these ideas could be applied in any places of the garment, uh, um, especially we wear of the the elbows very easily of the sweatshirts. But as I said earlier, I I prefer to use this idea on, on fabrics that that don't shrink. So thank you very much. And I would like to open it for questions if you have some or, or ideas or um, I don't know if anybody tried man, visible mending with felting. I haven't seen it anywhere, but it doesn't mean it, it hasn't happened before. And there are, there are probably very many more ways to do it. It's just the first little step, baby step. <laughs> So Flora, can you, the, the darning grid that you did on the sock with the synthetic fiber or the synthetic thread, when you did the, the grid with the, the, the thread, mm -hmm. do you always have to do that grid or does it depend on the amount that the sock has degraded, that, whether it's actually a hole or it's just thin? Yeah, it definitely, definitely depends on how big hole you have because my, my stuck had, stocking had a pretty pretty large hole, and I wanted to have some structure to have the wool to attach. So I think I think it helps. But if if you just wear your stocking off to the to the stage where you have that synthetic uh, guard thread, then you don't need to do the darning. So you have a question in the chat. Oh, who? Patty. Patty? <laughs> oh, where did you get the glass ball? It's um, the one I used. It's from a thrift store. It's, 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 it's the little glass I drink from in my studio. But you can use a large pebble or we have, we have had the um, wooden mushroom shape uh, little tools for darning. And I prefer glass because wood wood doesn't cope well with 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 water. So do you have that? Can, do you have that glass? You could show her that it's a glass. 
It's not a ball. Oh, I can I can pull back the slides. It's it was uh, in the studio, so I don't have it right here. So, but it's a it's like a little brandy glass kind of thing. It's round on the bottom and goes up. Yeah, it was it was a little. It's not. Um, uh, if you lived in Oregon, we we sometimes find uh, glass balls from nets on the beach. That would be good. But yeah, those would be good. Anything glass, yeah, pebbles, they work well. So this is the little glass here that I used, but it could be a glass ball too. So, Flora, can this be done with um, socks that are cotton or synthetic? I haven't experimented with those because, uh, first of all, wooden socks are usually more expensive and um, uh, I, it's harder to find. So, I, I tried to fix the better socks I had, but I think it would work. Probably it would work, especially if, if it has some fuzziness. I think that really helps. Since since these socks were super washed, these these behave like synthetic fabrics, kind of. They when 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 wool attaches, it's it's like working with with any any foreign materials. So I think it would work. Yeah, the my my favorite cotton socks are just inexpensive, but the company stopped making them in the size that fits me. They They've, they're saving money or something, I think, because the socks are now all too small from the same size, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about getting out, you know, I have a few that I haven't thrown away yet that I have holes in that, you know, <laughs> I love this. I love the way they fit. I love them. And so I think I would be worth saving. Yeah. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it, Flora. Thank you for <laughs> joining us. <laughs> That's great. Do you have another chat question from Gail? And from Diane. Okay. Uh, did the wool part felt more when washed shrink more? Um, I don't. I don't want. I, I don't quite either understand the question. Do you want to unmute yourself, Gail? Hello. Okay. There I am. <laughs> okay. Yeah. When you wash it, I know the superwash does not shrink more, but um, the woolen part. Hello. Pardon. Are you doing? Okay. Something happened to my thing. Um, when the woolen part is washed, does it shrink more? You know, the than the superwash, making it not fit right. Oh, I see. So I think I think the key of this idea is that I fed, I fed these patches all the way until they don't shrink anymore. And uh, this way okay. they have become so strong as leather and really, really durable. So I think, I think these, uh, these little patches are actually more durable than the rest of the stocking because they are so strongly felted. And um, I, believe, I believe that we can wash these in the washing machine because it will only make it even stronger. Right. So that's, okay. that's actually the goal, to have these patches as strong as possible and thus as, as durable as possible. Thank you. Sure. There was something I was going to um, say, Flo, when you were talking about putting the um, fiber into plastic and walking around um, with, with it, that um, we actually did a, um, one of the AGMs, we actually did that as, um, as an activity that we made pre-felts that we put on our bare feet Mm -hmm. and then covered it in plastic and, and put our shoe, shoes mm -hmm. or people use wellington boots or, or or shoes you didn't mind that could get wet because that you know because mm -hmm. of things and then we walked around for the rest of the day and we ended up with um sl slippers of mm -hmm. yeah. various felted things it was a, it was a really um good activity mm -hmm. um, that's that's do. interesting so, did yeah. you say, because I, 
uh, I saw that it felt much better on the ball of the feet and on the heel of the feet. So wherever we have the pressure, it felt really well. Mm. It also proved that it doesn't need as much water as we generally use in, in felting. It needs moisture, but not, you know, soaking water everywhere. Um, but I don't know, how was your experience with the with this part of the arch of the arch of the feet, right? It doesn't get. I've much never anything. used them as slippers. Mm -hmm. um, they need you need to wear. I think you need to wear and walk with them. And I think that the tops of them need um, separate mm -hmm. um, rubbing because it they won't. I think it depends what your shoes you've got on to mm. how much the idea is, is Yuli Song is a felt maker who invented this idea and she's done lots of projects in schools felting with children this yeah. way so oh, it's, it's Yuli yeah, Song who she's a lovely felt maker she makes um, um, shrouds as well and she developed this technique oh probably about 10 years or so and she's done lots of work and um, community projects teaching people the felting process but they're not she, she says they're not slippers you would not make slippers this way because it doesn't make a durable felt yeah it's just yeah. to um demonstrate the felting process and how just by walking around with mm -hmm. some water feet you can make some felt it's yeah. a lovely idea a lovely project mm -hmm. you i think you'd need to walk around for 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 a month of sundays and, and, and possibly the top still wouldn't be uh, felted enough to be slippers that can be worn, but it's a very interesting um, it, um, thing, to, thing to do. So you should, you should do that, um, okay. uh, yeah, Laura, and, and, and do the whole, whole foot and feet, both your feet, not, yeah. just, not, not just the patches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, people are asking Mandy to put the name of the lady in the chat window. I'm just doing that now. There Thank you. Go. Okay. We're going to look up her work. Sounds interesting. It's very interesting. Do you know what kind of project did she do? Um, she, 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 I mean, she sold it as a package um, to schools as community projects that she would go in and, and work with children um making these fantastic they're not slippers they're, they're, they're socks we would call them socks um and she, she used um blue face leicester from a um and she was in, um, also using local lo local walls as well to educate the children how to the whole process of of using wool to to make them out. yeah when we when we did them we used blue face Leicester I think the whole um no it wasn't the whole weekend but we used a lot of blue face Leicester that week that weekend for that age that AGM I remember mm -hmm. uh, of doing that but she's known I think now more for the shrouds that she does that it's worth looking up looking at her um for the shrouds that she does I think yeah. she's known Natalie, could you please uh, describe for people who are not aware of what an AGM is, please? It's the the AG, AGM. It's annual general meeting, and that's I don't, you don't you don't have AG annual general meetings as a thing no. in, in the in the in the states. Okay, I didn't I didn't realize that. So every organization, it's not just the International Belt Makers Association, but um, every organization um in fact tomorrow is the um agm for the basket makers association um oh, i, I nice. happen to know because i happen to be a member of them so i know no so that ev everybody has to have um it's an annual general meeting where the um committee would report and the um the finances would be re re would be reported so that you can mm -hmm. see how how money has been acqui acquired and spent um it's like a, it's a, a business meeting uh the, the annual business so meeting if, yeah the, the main part of it's a business meeting but when the, yeah. when the international film makers have their theirs they normally try and 
do something that even if it's a one even when it's when it has been able to be a one day face a um, face to face it's either um incorporated into a weekend or for a few days and we'd have workshops as well and um in fact i wouldn't say i know that mand is sending out an email very shortly to all members um telling them about that that our that, that our next um we've decided then the one in um for 2021 is going to be online again um again but making much more of an event of yeah. it hopefully um have having sort of interesting things going on around it and a chance to chat as well um like this in, yeah. in small group in in small groups um as as well which would be really so, nice yeah i've meet, only ever heard of the I've only ever heard of the AGM in, con in conjunction with the International Felt Makers Association. So I wasn't sure that, uh, I didn't realize that that was a kind of a UK name for those, most groups do have a, an annual meeting. Yeah. All companies, yeah. All, all, I don't know whether, we must have some sort of equivalent in the States. Mm. Yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's, called the annual gen it's just called the annual meeting. Annual. Sometimes yeah. it's a board meeting or the board has to, uh, Mm -hmm. then give information to the membership or an annual membership i don't know it's just got it, it doesn't have a special name but <laughs> it's just okay. yeah but you know hand weaver skill of america has the has them and uh mm -hmm. other other organizations have an mm -hmm. annual meeting yeah all, all our large companies that so are limited companies that should be they've got shareholders mm -hmm. are, have to have annual general yeah. meetings as well um, but By the way, I'm not, wear, I'm not wearing this because I'm afraid of COVID in my room here, but my room is very, isn't heated and it's very cold in here. So, <laughs> okay. I'm freezing. So oh I, see, I see we have another question in the chat window from Diane. Diane, if it's not noisy in your background, you can turn your voice on. Um, she says she tried once to fix a small hole in a smart voice sock and she did the needle flatting method and this was her first time yeah, and the repair worked but it was a little bit lumpy and she's asking if if i think the needle needle method would work <clears throat> but um those people who know me they know that i i i'm not a fan of needle flatting because it brings me nightmares <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it just doesn't come natural to me. So I try to avoid it as much as possible. And, um, and, and the other reason is that I believe that almost anything can be achieved by the wet fatting process that you can do with needle fatting. So we can, we can do almost, almost all those little details with very careful work. But, <clears throat> and, and we can do sculptural work with, with wet fatting. And I prefer those rather to the to the needles in this in this idea however i think i think it might be a good idea to use some needle fighting but my uh, my thinking process was that i wanted to stretch the the stocking or the i wanted to stretch the fabric as much as possible so when i put the little patch on the fabric i i could give space for shrinkage and i i I couldn't figure out how would that work with needle fighting because for needle fighting you need to have a foam or something where you can poke it through. But if you can f if you can f if you can stretch your fabric and do needle fighting, mm -hmm. I think it works if you continue with wet fighting. Because um, for for this project here, especially if if you want to fix something that that has a lot of agitation in, in everyday life, they have to be strong. And, and wet fighting has much stronger result than, than needle fighting. So I'm really not, not against needle fighting for fixing, but I think it's gonna be much stronger if you fight it forward by, um, by, um, by wet fighting. But you could, you could do details Maybe you can start bed fighting and you will fight some, some details on and then finish it with bed fighting. 
may I may I add in something there because I do a lot of needle felting myself as well. But um, I, the, I I find that people get lumps when they are using big pieces of fiber. They aren't breaking it down, and mm -hmm. they're and they're and they're too thick. The, the the way you laid it out with broken pieces, very thinly, very very thin. You would do the same if it was going to be needle. You know, I mean, it's um, it, it, when people don't do that, they get the big lumps. Mm -hmm. In my experience, because I've, I've been working with them, you know, since the, the 80s. And yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's how I and then I always I always integrate wet felting with with the uh, needle felting, the, the two of them together. But mm -hmm. so th that would create lumps if it was if the fibers were too long and too big and the, the layers were too thick. <clears throat> Would it be? I didn't get to see that question. I'm sorry. I, the way I'm set up today, I can't find see the questions. Okay, so there's a question for you. Would it be a, or is it, would it be an idea to use woolen thread for the darning on the on the cotton socks? That's an idea to use woolen woolen yarn and then maybe fat it. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think I would, but. Uh, because the um, I don't have any woolen thread at this time in my life that is as thin as the cotton socks are. So I think um, I think I would I think I'm just going to use the, the, a pre felt patch and see what happens um, across the, the holes that are in them because it's you know it's 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 sewing thread it's fine for the so the cotton socks so you know it might just be horrible when I'm done I don't have no idea we'll see. Yeah, so Laura, do you want to unmute yourself? <laughs> Hi, good morning. Um, yeah, I was just, uh, I was thinking that the surface for a sock, a hole in a sock might be, you know, larger, but a little hole, like, un unfortunately, I have, I find that I have moths occasionally, and I'll have a little hole in my mm -hmm. cashmere sweater, my wool sweater. And I usually just try to fix those things with a stitch, but it usually looks bad. And so rather than, um, you know, even trying to just hide the hole to maybe do something a little more artistic and mm -hmm. make, the, make the, the repair part of an interesting feature on say a plain cashmere sweater or something, I mean, would you, you wouldn't really do the darning thing, would you? Or, or maybe you would, I don't know. I, I wouldn't. I would, yeah. I think if if you had a moth hole, I would start probably with needles because it's so small, so needle felting. And uh, you can you can fix the hole with a, with little needle felting and then maybe just very, very little wet felting with your two fingers to make it stay <laughs> longer. But when you talk about cashmere and, and fine, um, woolen or, or mohair sweatshirts i i would really worry about shrinking them because i i had some accidents many years ago and i don't want to uh, redo those accidents when i shrank my sweatshirt to my toddler's size <laughs> so so you have to be very careful if you have such fine materials and and uh, you know um the wool only shrinks when it gets moisture. So if you can, if you can make sure that you only only get that very tiny mass hole wet, and you don't let the, the rest of the of the sweatshirt get wet, then then it should work. When, <clears throat> but then, so when when we start thinking about <clears throat> repairing garments, it's a little bit different than stockings because stockings are very obvious that they have usually two patches where we need fixing <clears throat> but when you when you repair garments uh, then it brings a whole new idea that <clears throat> it looks it looks much better if if you if you have re repetitive pattern so it looks more um, thoughtful more designed if if it's not just one patch you know a random place where, where the moth made its little hole but if if you end up with something on on a random place, you could you could repeat it in in different places and maybe different sizes, 
so it, it, it looks more planned and, and direct design. Okay, thank you. Uh, Laura, back, Laura, back to the thread question for just a minute. So um, I just want people to know that many yarn stores have wool um, thread or, or darning um, items that that work perfectly for doing the grids or even if it's a small hole for just um, closing off that part. And also here at least most of our um, so stores where you'd buy fabric and thread also carry wool thread. So it would be available to do in a thread for um, that activity as well. Well, to reply to you, uh, I, think, I think it might be a good start to, to darn with with a woolen thread, but I, <clears throat> I would always add a few layers of very thin merino wool to make it stronger. Because loose wool, just like stockings, I mean spun wool, it wears off much faster than felted wool. So if you want to fix places on your, on your garment where, where it has a lot of, lots, lots of wear, then uh, I would, I would, uh, I would go further than just darning with woolen yarn. Yeah, well, I was just thinking in terms of a moth hole can mm -hmm. can often a moth hole often can be with a loose, um, yeah, thread because mm -hmm. it is a, a fuzzy thread. The actual wool darning. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I think Natalie had something. Only the. It just happened to be where I'm sitting. This is an ongoing project of the very classic. This is a um, um, fine merino um, cardigan, big cardigan um, that got attacked by moth, moths. And every time I look at it, there's more. Um, but I have done a lot of um, of my vis visible mending, darning, mm -hmm. and in fact. The thread that I've used is um, silk. Um, it's a variegated, which is really useful for getting things. So I'm using one, th although it's multicolored, it's one thread, but very mm. visible. And I go and I make the, the stitches bigger than the, the whole so that, um, yeah, definitely. So that it's, a big, it's a bigger, bigger patch. And as you say, that you can, you if if you've only got one tiny hole, but it's going to show, mm -hmm. you can make more, you can always make more patches mm -hmm. that that can be seen, just so that it's not you know obvious, so obvious that you've mm -hmm. things. But I think any any um, person who works with wool will know that it's likely to be moth holes underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Neath any decorative mend any decorative mending that we wouldn't tend to, but um, I haven't. I I, I think I would find felting um, too fiddly, and um, and I would possibly try needle felting of being dry rather than than being wet because I can sit and do this anywhere, whereas felting. Um, um, I would would need to be in in um, you know in a space where I can use the water, so um, it's not so convenient. And when I'm felting, I rather create something new than the mend some something, unless it's a a favourite felt garment or something. Then mm -hmm. you know when you can fix something rather than repairing a whole. Thank you for showing your piece. I really like your Monday. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Pat? Um, I, we were, when we were talking earlier, uh, Nancy, Flora and I, I, I had this idea too that that might be cool. And that is because I do needle felting, I mean, do some patches of needle felted patch, you know, make a patch separately and felt it down a little bit so because I like to wet felt also so I had this thing available and then that could be then stitched over over the holes you know so that you could have these a variety of these cute little designs that you would that you know the color coordinated and whatever you wanted and you could just put them you know where you I don't know I just thought that might be 
like for Laura, you know, it might be a fun way of uh, being able to have your cake and eat it too, Natalie, the, where you could be working dry for a while and you maybe wouldn't even have to work wet. Uh, you would just, you know, mm -hmm. sew it over the, the hole. It might be a fun thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, it's you know, another, another rabbit hole because most of us have garments yes. that we don't want to throw away. We love them so much. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 there are so many ways to fix them. Yeah, I see a really cool uh, website mentioned by Diane in the chat window. I recommend you to save it. It's a website about uh, uh, visible mending, mainly by stitches. It's really cool. Uh, Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I, I was going to say the other thing that I do uh, that I do is that I spin, so I could always um, spin some fiber and use and use that that and, and I would on a um, on on some small on some small things I would spin, especially for for um, um and do use um wool in my work you know in work working with with yarn spun yarn with felt as well that um that i that i do that i do do that <coughs> so I put stitches into felt work mm -hmm. that's done with hand spun yarn cool well, I think that's probably the end of our session for today. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Session four will be next Friday and hopefully registration will be open on Sunday. And our topic will be um, structured felting for more structural type items. So we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you, everybody. I wanted, I wanted to mention before we say goodbye that we started the YouTube channel for these uh, sessions. So if any of your friends um, missed uh, being here, let them know that they can watch it after, probably if they are gonna be uploaded by tomorrow. And we usually share them on the Facebook page and, and on our, our website. Um, share them into the International Felt Breakers Association. Um, oh, okay. Group, groups as well. That would be really nice. Okay, we will do. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing next week's um, by YouTube. And, we will, uh, we will record it. Good luck have with the good, wedding. Have a good yeah. wedding. Thank, thank, good. thank you, thank you.